My name is Sandra Pasco. I am 72 years old. On my birthday this year, I thought I was 73. So it was kind of nice to <laughs> realize I'm only 72. I was born in Canton, Ohio at Mercy Hospital in 1948. I ended up in Toledo through my mom and dad. <laughs> dad. Dad had worked for a mortuary driving the ambulance, and he was going to embalming school, and he was looking for a job. And there was an ad for James Coyle and Son here in Toledo, Ohio. And we moved here, and we actually moved above the mortuary on Broadway. I guess knowing that it was a mortuary, you know, I didn't, if mom went down to the basement to do laundry, I'd just stay with her. I didn't want to go back in the dark recesses, might come across some um, bodies or something. <laughs> but, um, I have a memory of my brother Mark getting into the embalming fluid that they threw in the trash and coming up the stairway and, oh my God, beet red, eyes watering, and they finally determined, you know, what it was. And I'll tell you, they always had those bottles emptied after that. We were on a corner lot and there were a lot of leaves and we'd have fun out there raking leaves. And I don't know, you're probably too young, but we had, there were lawn sweepers, they were called. They were yay big with a bag and they'd pull the leaves in and then you'd have to unhook it and dump it out in the street. And that's when we were allowed to burn. And that was fun. That was a lot of fun, matter of fact, when I was raising my boys, you know, we had to break in our yard, and I taught Jamie just didn't want to get into it. And I told him, no, oh, it can be fun, and blah, blah, blah. And towards the end, he did come up and say, Mom, you were right. That was fun. <laughs> when I was nine, and it was on my birthday. And the fire department actually, you know, you could see it from across the street. But anyway, we all came home from Sylvania, Ohio, visiting family, friends, and we're getting ready for bed and I'm seeing smoke come up through the baseboards and I mention it to mom and no sooner, you know, did we realize that, that the phone rang to get out, that there was a fire. And um, we went over and waited in the fire station, actually. And um, like I said, it was my birthday and I got a watch <laughs> for my birthday. And I begged them to go back and get that watch. <laughs> Well, poor mom, with five of us at that time, she had to make sure we were quiet if they had showings downstairs. And dad, he was, he was just a good guy. He worked, he worked hard. They were fun. I mean, I know dad was fun. Um, mom, I think, was too busy with the kids just too busy. I know she liked for us to read. I remember her buying books, you know, the Nancy Drew and Nurse Barton books. And <laughs> From my girlfriend's perspective, they thought I wasn't allowed to be a child enough. I, I don't know if that's true or not but I know we all had chores and that. Well, I raised my boys the same way. 
and I don't think, you know, they regret it. I don't regret it. I know my <laughs> mom liked the shade or the drapes open, and I would go around and close them. <laughs> I don't know what that was all about at that time. But I liked the darkness, she liked the brightness. <laughs> I, well, I went to OLPH and Macaulay High School, which is now Toledo Christian. And um, I had good experiences at both schools. And I learned how to be active in a way in the church or community. I was always doing something and especially over at Macaulay. And I did some acting and come to find out that's mom, you know, had a leaning towards that too, acting, and I never realized that. Yes, I remember trying out for something and this gal, I can't, I don't know her name, and that's just as well, I can't remember it. She was a year older than me, but she came to me, why don't you do it this way? And I said, okay. I mean, I didn't like her interpretation of it, and I did it my way, and I got the role. <laughs> what was the role? Cinderella's stepmother. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Well, I wouldn't call it a career. I had a lot of jobs, <laughs> but not not a career out right out of high school. I I did work for Toledo Jewelers and learned how to repair Timex watches. And at that time, well, downtown Toledo was bustling. And there were different concessions, like at Lion's Store and Tiki's, and um, and I would train. I trained at the one at Lion's Store, and it, it evolved where I moved to Chicago and was trained at Wee Bolts. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. I don't think they're around anymore. Carson Perry Scott, that was one of their big departments. And then I moved to Wilmette, Illinois, and worked at a plaza with Carson Perry Scott. Well, one of my visits home when I was living in Illinois and went to a, they called it, Toledo Young Adults, Toledo Catholic Young Adults, something like that, a dance. And that's where I had met him. Was it love at first sight? Mm -hmm. Not really, not really, but it grew. <laughs> what was he like? Quiet. He was very quiet. He was better one-on-one -on -one with people. He didn't really like social social gatherings. He loved to play basketball, and he was good at it. If he was here right now, what would you want to tell him? Hmm. Thank you for providing so well for me and your family. Well, my sons, Jason and Jamie, and Jamie married Brittany Point, and she came into the marriage with a son, Derek, who I always considered a grandson. And I think he considered me a nana. There, there were things that, you know, maybe in conversation he'd mention or say, and I thought it made me feel good. 
that he thought of me as a nana. And um, James then with Brittany had um, Drew. <laughs> and I, it, it's, I get for loss of words when I think of that. I mean, I was just so overjoyed. My heart felt like it was bursting, and I don't know if it's because it's, you know, flesh of your flesh. I can't, cannot explain it. I, I don't think I even had that feeling with, you know, the birth of my sons. It's just something hard to explain. You got to experience it. You know, I flew alone, and I got through the airport pretty okay because you look at the signs, and really, it's you can figure it out. Um, and there was someone there, you know, with the sign, so you knew who to go with. And then we were all in a group and became very close. Uh, matter of fact, when I got home, and the scrapbook is over there, um, I had asked everyone if they would contribute a poem or something uh, regarding their visit to Guatemala. And so I put together a scrapbook for everyone. And I just, really, I just did the front cover. It would have been a lot to do every page. So I found some paper and it had people holding hands and um, printed it, printed everything on that. And that, that was special. I had Sandra. What's unfortunate is once you're done with them, you're done. They won't let you write, they won't let you have contact. And that, that was sad. I mean, there's not even any mention of her, even when I have asked. I have called Kansas and talked to them by the phone. And she's very productive and doing well. But then I um, started sponsoring her sister, Brenda. And it's just a joy reading those letters that come in and they're so appreciative and I could see that when I was there I mean you'd give these little kids some candy and it's like yeah, <laughs> you know jumping up and yeah and I came home thinking you know I see this commercial on TV for school starting yay mom got me notebooks and that no Children here don't react that way. Most children, they're, they're spoiled. They're given too much. Those children appreciated everything. I think they got it right. How did that experience shape you? Just realizing how really great this nation is. Um, how blessed I am. Uh, matter of fact, I think it was a year or two after I, I had my kitchen remodeled and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm getting my kitchen remodeled and here she's sending me pictures um, that my money is contributing to a extra room with and showing me all the bricks or whatever that was going in and I thought <laughs> you know I always thought I was a nice person but I look back in my younger years and I don't know if I was all that I mean, everybody would say, oh, you're so sweet. No, oh, you're... I got tired of that. <laughs> and I think I went through a cynic mode. And I didn't like that after a while. And I just became myself. Just be 
yourself. Don't compare. Well, Jason's always been a hoot. <laughs> He's Jamie, he got into acting and we go over to the university and, you know, I was just so proud of him. Um, I think Jason probably feels like he was shortchanged and, and I feel bad for that. That I loved you. Don't make me cry. It's all right. Get the message for me. <laughs> um, I always loved you, and I think they know that. I think they know that. I always didn't make wise choices, but I did my best. You know, as they say, you did your best with what you knew at the time. And um, I think I became a better grandma. And maybe that's because you have the time. You know, when you're raising your kids and you're involved in other things, it's tough. Do you have a message for your grandchildren? Be good. No. <laughs> Just be well, treat people well, be kind, believe in your creator. Put others first sometimes, you know? It's not always about you. Love above all things. Everybody has a story, and you that story isn't always revealed. So be kind. Just be kind. You want to act a little bit from the camera? <laughs> Show up the Wicked Witch laugh. <laughs> I don't even know if I can do it. Any kind of voices? No. <laughs> Greg was always good at that. Yeah, he was. Oh, I don't know if I can even do it. Stage fright. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Come here, my. I can't. I don't have the voice anymore. Come here, my little pretty. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, the I, villain from Cinderella? It's the wicked stepmother. Oh, okay. You silly girl. <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, and now your own character. <laughs> oh, well, darling. <laughs> I live such a charmed life. Perfect. It's 2020, folks. We've been going through the COVID, and we're all tired of it. <laughs> However, we're being cautious and doing what we're supposed to do, because this has to end. <laughs> this has to end. <laughs>